What is WorldCat? WorldCat is a tool that allows you to search from books, articles, media, and more within the ISU library and in 72,000 libraries all over the world. Why would you want to search all of that? Well, the ISU library has over 600,000 books on our shelves, but there is no way that we have everything you need for your research project, especially if your topic is obscure or narrow in focus. WorldCat allows you to essentially search the library catalogs of a ton of libraries at once. This makes finding something relevant much more likely. To get to WorldCat, you need to go to the library's homepage. Once you're there, select the Databases tab you see along the top. From here, click on the drop-down menu and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Select WorldCat for search and hit Go. I'll be the first to say that WorldCat can be a bit confusing and overwhelming to search, but if you use the limiters to focus your search, you'll be able to stay on track. Let's do an example search. I'm interested in the subject of cyberbullying, so I'll type in my topic here. WorldCat does support truncation, so I'm going to put an asterisk at the end, and that will tell the database to search for cyberbullying, cyberbully, cyberbullies, and so on. There are so many ways to focus your search. You really want to do this, or you will face the horror of sorting through tens of thousands of results. No thank you. Like the normal library catalog, you can search by keyword, you can search by author, by subject, or by title, but here there are a lot more options. You can build your search using the Boolean operators and, or, and not. So maybe I'm only interested in cyberbullying in teenagers. So I can put teen with an asterisk, which will pull up teens and teenagers, and include the word and, so that will tell the database to search for cyberbullying and teenagers. But for now, I'm just going to get rid of that because I want a broad search. If you know that you only want materials published in the last few years, you can limit that here in the yearbox. You can also select the language and the number of libraries. So say you want to pull up books on cyberbullying that are only found in 500 or more libraries. That just means it's a really popular source if lots and lots of libraries have it. You should really, really limit by type. Otherwise, that is just too much. We are specifically focused on books, so that's all I want WorldCat to bring up, and I'll click on that. And since we are looking for books that we want to use for college-level research papers, I'd suggest that you select Not Juvenile under Audience and under Content Not Fiction. You can also limit to just the ISU library, but the whole point of WorldCat is to see what everyone else has. Finally, you can select how WorldCat shows you what it finds. It defaults to show you the number of libraries, which can be handy since the most popular items will appear first. However, you can also sort by relevance or date. Okay, we're going to go ahead and run our search. We're looking for cyberbullying, we're going to look for just books that are not juvenile and not fiction, and we're going to rank it by the number of libraries. So this top book is owned by over 1,000 libraries. Let's look at all the details. All the basic stuff is here, the author, the title, the summary and date, but it also lists the libraries that have this book. To see that, just click on Libraries Worldwide that own that item. When you click on this, it will bring up libraries close to you. Well, at least usually it will. If you are logging in through the ISU link, sometimes it will assume you're in Idaho, even if you're not. So these are the libraries in Idaho that own this particular book. The other features on this record include the table of contents, the abstract, and also some subject headings which you can search on. Now let's go back to the list of articles. You may notice that some of these have an ISU icon. That means that the ISU library actually owns this book. If you bring up the detailed record, you can click search the catalog at your library, and it will bring up the library catalog entry with the call number, the location, and all that other good stuff. Okay. Let's go back again, and I'm going to show you what the results look like when you sort by date. I've kept the search how we had it, but now instead of ranking by number of libraries, we're going to rank by date. Notice that these books are owned by a lot fewer libraries than our first search, but the items at the top are the most recent. Note, the fewer the libraries that own a book, the less likely we'll be able to get it via interlibrary loan. It's easy to find libraries that will loan us a book when we have 1,000 or more libraries to choose from. 
But if a book is owned by only two or three libraries, we may not be able to get it. That is just a cautionary tale that's good to be aware of when you sort by date. You can go ahead and mark the books that look interesting by clicking on the little check mark that's here next to the title. You can pull these back up by going to Mark Records. Here are the three I've selected so far. And once you're here, you can email it, export it, print it, or do whatever else you want to do. Okay, so let's say you have found one of these books that you are really interested in and you actually want to get your hands on it. The next step is to fill out an interlibrary loan request form. This can be found by going back to the library website and hovering over My Library Accounts and selecting the Interlibrary Loan Account option. You may have to sign in using your 9-digit Bengal ID number and register for an account if you haven't before. Once you're here at the home page, select New Requests and choose which type of work you are requesting. In this case, we are requesting a book, so I'll select that. The easiest way to fill out this form is to have WorldCat open in one window or tab and have the interlibrary loan request form open in another. Then you can copy and paste the required fields and submit your request.